Hi everyone, my name is Nathan Rose. I'm the Head of Clinical Affairs, Global Head of Clinical Affairs at Metagenics. I'm based in Brisbane, Australia, and I'm pleased to be here today for the NED talk to discuss specialised pro resolving mediators. So let's open up the presentation. I'll share my screen. So I want to talk about the emerging science of specialised pro resolving mediators. These are downstream metabolites of omega-3 fatty acids that are available for use in clinical practice. They've only been around for a couple of years in clinical practice, and they've only really been discovered around about 20 years ago. So the, that's why I've called it the emerging science of specialised pro-resolving mediators. Now, we'll dive into the science shortly, but I want to start off with low level of evidence, and that is uh, some case studies we've received since we launched them here in Australia about three or four years ago. So since we launched the, these, this ingredient, we've had a number of case studies come pouring in to our clinical support line. I just want to share with you the depth and breadth of these case studies to build a bit of a picture about where these, uh, these fatty acid metabolites could potentially treat patients. So from I'll go from the toe to the head. We've had cases on plantar fasciitis. This is practitioners bringing in saying, I, I gave SPMs to my patient with X condition and they got amazing results. So they were that bored, they they felt compelled to ring us up and give us some anecdotal feedback. Heal inflammation, a woman with long-standing heal inflammation. We've had a number of cases of osteoarthritis being resolved or improved with SPMs. Uh, a, a woman who suffered horrific and chronic long-standing uh, rashes after any sort of vaccine like the flu jab or, or the COVID vaccine disappeared within a couple of days of taking the SPMs. Hip pain, 25 years of hip pain where they were scheduled for surgery. Uh, they ended up cancelling the surgery because the hip pain resolved so rapidly. Rheumatoid arthritis, ganglion cysts. We've had a couple cases of people with their ganglion cysts, like a massage therapist who had it from occupational overuse. The cysts had disappeared. Ankylosing spondylitis, so really good resolution there. And some reproductive issues like vaginismus, uh, this pain on intercourse with women, that resolved after a couple of years of um, debilitating uh, pain and um, discomfort, dysmenorrhea period pain, and also ovulatory pain or ovulation pain in separate women. And menopausal and on the hormone front still, menopausal aches and pains have improved with SPMs, psoriasis, fibromyalgia, several cases there. A couple of cases of sinusitis, one in a child and one in a 55-year-old man. The, the, the older man had it for 20 years and nothing had helped until he tried SPMs. Moods improved, long COVID symptoms improved, and headaches have improved. Now, these are just anecdotes. Now I want to dive into the science. But I just wanted to paint a bit of a picture on the, the breadth of these things. So what are SPMs? How they work? They work a lot differently to other anti-inflammatories. And really, it's a whole new area of physiology that's been discovered. A lot of times in medicine and in natural medicine, we try and dampen the, the uh, inflammatory cytokines like interleukin-6 and so forth. And however, there's in recent years, the past couple of decades, researchers have identified this active phase of inflammation called resolution. So when there's something that disturbs our homeostasis, like an infection or injury, we need an inflammatory response to fight it off, fight infection, to warden off the um, site to sterilize a site and so forth. So this initiation is really important, but often it stays around for far too long. And we often use herbs and nutrients and even pharmaceuticals to try and dampen that initiation. Where the SPMs come in is this resolution phase. This is a whole separate piece of physiology that helps resolve infection uh, and inflammation. And we need these mediators to sort of catalyze or kickstart this process. So think of it as like um, there's been some damage done to a building and that's the initiation is there's a leak and then you need to get in there and sort of um, get to the pipes. You've got to like create some damage, some collateral damage to get there and you've got to cut out the pipes and so forth. That's all important, but we want that to resolve and resolution in this analogy is patching up the, um, the work when it's repaired. So we need lipid mediators for that. Okay, so you're probably familiar with essential fatty acids, the omega-6s and omega-3s, and we've long known that they have signaling properties and anti-inflammatory properties, particularly the EPA and DHA, but it's not those species alone that uh, mediate the benefits. They need to be metabolized further 
to create these downstream metabolites which have efficacy. And we've just illustrated there's a couple of speed humps or enzymes that need to activate the intermediates and then those intermediates then go through s several more enzymes to be activated to or metabolized to create the these pro-resolving mediators. So there's a whole big family. There's lipoxins from the omega-6s and then there's these resolvins. As a, and the, the names that are suggest that they're, they're physiology. And so resolvins help resolve inflammation. Protectins are more for protecting or they're also known as neuroprotectins. So hinting at, at, at its efficacy on, on brain function. And then there's marecins, which is to do with macrophage, the MA, to help with macrophage switching, which I'll speak about in a moment. But as you can see, the downstream from uh, the omega-6 and 3 um, pathways, and what research is uncovering, and it's still a lot more to be learned, is that certain populations um, have trouble getting over those speed humps, for want of a better term. And therefore, administering those intermediate metabolites or those end-stage products may be more efficacious than giving the omega-3s and 6s alone. And as I said, we're still learning a lot, but these are some of the factors that have been linked to poor or impaired SPM biosynthesis. So there's physiological factors there on the left, like smoking and age, and women tend to um, have reduced capacity compared to men, different um, ethnicities, body composition, being overweight tends to impair it. Uh, after surgery, we see a, a precipitous drop in SPM biosynthesis, almost when you need it the most. Uh, and then on the right-hand side, in almost a, a negative feed, uh, or sorry, a positive feedback, a vicious cycle that the conditions impair biosynthesis. So all the itis, osteoarthritis, rhinocytosis, sinusitis, et cetera, um, they prevent or reduce the ability to make SPMs. And research is showing that um, there is low SPMs in a number of conditions listed here, metabolic syndrome, obesity, as I said, after surgery, cardiovascular disease, so can, which sort of mirrors the, the case studies we and those anecdotes we um, showed earlier on. So I'm just building this stage that you can see there is a bit of a need state for these SPMs, and there's a, a long list of references. I'll provide the references to the key papers uh, today. Now, so what happens... How do we correct or improve our SPM uh, levels or balance? Unfortunately, giving the precursors may not provide enough. That is, giving fish oil does not necessarily mean that the patient will um, synthesize adequate SPMs. In this study here, they gave it to um, patients and the dotted lines are overweight and obese patients and the um, sold lines are, are healthy weight individuals. And they also, it was 2.4 grams a day of fish oil over four weeks. And for the last week, they gave them uh, aspirin as well, which aspirin theoretically uh, induces SPM production. But as you can see, and particularly, and these are downstream metabolites, RV1s are resolving, MA in the middle is maricin, and the 17 HDAs are protectin, a species of the protectins. As you can see, the administration of fish oil didn't always elevate these downstream or intermediate metabolites, particularly the 17 HDA, HDHA on the right hand side there. And aspirin um, actually decreased SPMs in many cases rather than induced it. So essentially, the takeaway from this is we can't rely on fish oils to increase SPM levels, particularly in people who are metabolically compromised, like people overweight. In contrast, a, a recent study giving patients two grams a day of SPMs found an appreciable level in the similar downstream metabolites, as you can see here. This is in overweight subjects as well. So compared to the last study who failed to elicit uh, induction or um, a detectable changes in serum levels of SPMs from fish oil, these, this population was found to increase their SPM levels by ingesting the SPMs. So overcoming those speed humps or um, supplying the, the materials downstream of those speed humps. Now, as I said, this is still an emerging science. SPMs were discovered around 20 years ago and it takes a long time for science to evolve and medicine. So we're only just starting now to see the clinical benefits 
of SPMs and also the amount of literature or research published is is still small and growing. But today I just want to whet your appetite of what's available and I expect to see a lot more in the future. So as you can see here from 2021, this trial here, um, they looked at more biomarkers in both healthy patients and patients with peripheral arterial disease. They gave them, again, um, two grams a day of SPMs um, for 12 weeks, and they looked at biomarkers rather than health outcomes. But we saw there was an increase in SPM metabolites in both groups, and in both groups, uh, the this switching. So I haven't spoken a lot about the physiology of SPMs or, or their actions, but essentially they promote that, remember that resolution physiology, and that's thought to be largely mediated by our macrophages going from the M1, the pro-inflammatory initiation stage, to the M2 uh, anti-inflammatory or pro-resolving stage, this repair stage. So giving patients SPMs found that their macrophages went from the almost the, the uh, Mr. Hyde to the Dr. Jekyll in that analogy, went from the, the bad guy to the good guy. They've got this ability to switch phenotypes. Likewise, the macrophages um, began gobbling up, oh, sorry, the phagocytites um, began gobbling up debris in these experiments as well. So a sign that they're cleaning up this, you know, this construction site, all evidence of resolution physiology. Now, a couple more clinical trial uh, outcomes. Again, these are open label studies and there's um, some on, underway and hopefully we'll see more uh, you know, rigorous double-blind placebo-controlled studies in the future, but this is how science unfolds. It's a, it's a slow start. So this is a, a case series of a, a integrative physician over in America, Dr. Eric Lundquist, and others um, used in patients with fibromyalgia. They again, uh, two grams a day of SPMs in patients with fibromyalgia. And you note, know, this was a standalone therapy. You're probably familiar that uh, fibromyalgia is a difficult condition. It's hard to treat. Um, often it needs multiple therapies. But in this sub in this um, cohort of patients, they wanted to test the efficacy of SPMs as a standalone. And you can see their fibromyalgia scores in this chart. And when we get into the green zone or the score below 40, that's generally considered remission. So um, some people had low levels to start with, a low, a lowish score, but it all generally declined. They did notice that those who didn't improve, um, they also did some testing and screening for chronic inflammatory response syndrome, the, the SIRS, like the mold toxicity. Um, and they found that patients who had uh, suspected um, SIRS case, they failed to respond, which makes sense because they need more you know, thorough and aggressive treatment. But a small study, observational, but the signal was positive that the SPMs helped with fibromyalgia. So the final study I want to look at was, again, a recent study where, again, it was open labeled, but they got 44 patients who were experiencing pain and didn't specify what sort of pain, but um, they screened them just with questionnaires on, on pain severity. And if they had moderate to severe pain, they were enrolled. And this was a, a titration uh, protocol where they started with three grams a day of fish, uh, not fish oil, of SPMs. And if they responded after two weeks, they'd be dropped down to two grams a day. If they didn't, hadn't respond, hadn't responded, they would have been, inc they were increased to four grams a day of SPMs. So it's sort of like hyper responders and, and maybe lower responders. But you can see just, you know, with an eyeball view, you can see generally a trend, particularly those who responded um, dramatically and reduced their dosage, so fatigue, sleep disturbances, social functioning increased, and quality of life measures improved as well. Likewise, the again, it was only four weeks, so maybe can't expect too much, again, with people with chronic pain conditions with a single monotherapy. But we, again, we see improvements in depression in these patients and anxiety using the various scales and metrics. And then finally, PROMISE, which is a, a global uh, measure of like pain intensity, again, seem to be better in the hyper responders, but their overall intensity, their worst pain, their, their least pain, their average pain and the current pain all tended to improve. 
So overall, um, we can see it improve pain, quality of life, mood, sleep, fatigue, and physical functioning. And um, you can see here, they just surveying the, the um, patients, did you find this therapy of benefit and would you continue using it? You can see the bulk of them are on the right hand side there of uh, improved a little or much improved or very much improved, whereas um, very few said no change or worse. So overall, a pretty good result with a single therapy. So we have a list of all the clinical trials to date. Maybe an easy way to access this is just with your smartphone, scan that code, it'll take you to that website and it'll give you the, an updated list on all the clinical trials to date or the, the case series. As I said, it's it's small but growing. And speaking of, um, there are research on ad administering um, just like a specific SPM, like that RV one, like a certain resolvent or a certain Marisin or Lipoxin and so forth. So this is a bit of a collage of a, a summary of where we might see further benefits of um, SPMs based on animal models and mechanistic studies and so forth, um, and also some other feedback we've received. So as I said, pain, Athletic performance, we've got case studies there and um, hints about certain uh, SPMs helping there. PCOS, endometriosis, I think we'll, we'll hopefully see some good data on endometriosis soon. Likewise, IBD, oral health with gingivitis, perimenopausal health, cardiometabolic disease, obesity, um, long COVID. We've got some cases underway seeing some benefits of long COVID, but these are all sort of, as I said, animal studies and, and anecdotal trials. But I think the future is bright with SPMs. I think there's a signal there. The physiology makes sense. It's an important part of our physiology. I will, um, as I said, supply all the uh, references there. So be buoyed, um, trial it perhaps with your patients, give us feedback. I'd like to hear more and hopefully uh, we can discuss more science in the future. So thank you for your time. I hope you've enjoyed that fascinating overview on SPMs. As Nathan said, this is a new area of research, but one that I suspect will be growing rapidly over the coming months and years. My name is Claire Gwandel, and I'm the Science and Education Manager for BANT and the Managing Editor for the Nutrition Evidence Database. And I wanted to just quickly show you some of the research that we've got on Ed on SPMs. So we have various video and podcasts and other sponsored content from Nutri Advanced and Metagenics, as well as some clinical trials. So four of these have been indexed by the BANT and NED team, which you can access here. And we have one expert review, um, both accessible through this left hand panel. So take a look through and watch out for some more from the BANT NED team on this area of research, which I suspect it's going to grow. Thank you so much for listening to this NED Talk brought to you by BANT in partnership with Nutri Advanced and Metagenics.